everyone. This is Gail. And today we're going to be, I'm going to be doing a request. Um, you know, every once in a while I send out a request for ideas or things that you would like to see. And one of the requests that I had was to do a um, retro cane using rainbow colors. So in trying to find the correct colors, uh, I was looking and I didn't have the colors I needed in Primo, so I went back to my Kato clay. And this Kato clay is probably 15 years old. But I was able to condition it. That's what I love about Kato. It, yes, it gets hard. But it is uh, conditionable, if that's a word. And I think I've shown you that before, but I'll do a separate video showing you how to condition old Kato clay. I'll, I'll check. But anyway, so these are the four colors I use. This is ultra blue, yellow, and magenta. And these are the three primary colors that I'm using. And what I did, and I did all this last night, is I blended those colors and came up with a rainbow palette. Uh, like this is the fuchsia. I didn't do a yellow by itself, but I did do a blue by itself. And um, But I blended them so they go from purple uh, on down, you know. And then when I, I cut two circles of each one, I have a cutter that is just about the size of my Macon's extruder. And so I use that um, to cut my circles and then I put it together and roll it to where it'll fit inside. So what I want to do is I'm going to take, I'm going to start on this end and work my way across. I'm going to take one of the regular color, oh I didn't tell you, the top two rows here are the colors that I mixed. The bottom two rows are those same colors but mixed with equal parts of white. So, you know, that's where these colors came from. But I'm going to make a retro cane. And I think what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take a dark and a light. And then a dark and a light. And then a dark and a light and a dark and a light. And I hope that all these colors will fit in my extruder. Otherwise, I'm going to have to split it into two, and I really don't want to do that. But you'll just I'm just going to alternate dark and light as I go down my row. But I really had fun mixing these colors last night. It's been a while since I worked with Kato. I love Kato clay. I hear people talk about the smell, which I don't, it doesn't bother me. I don't think it smells bad at all. And then about how hard it is to condition, but it is just the best clay to work with. I love it. You know, once you get it conditioned, and I'll show you in a future video how to condition Kato clay. And let me just show you what I'm talking about. It shows up better on the magenta than on anything. Drop my white out of the bag. But on the magenta when I sliced it Let me see where it will show the best. I think here's a slice that I didn't condition. See, there's a slice, but see all that white in there? That's just old clay. That means that the conditioner, the uh, binders haven't been bl blended in. But you, there's a way to get that blended in to where it's just a nice, smooth clay. 
shouldn't have stopped in the middle of what I was doing, but, you know, I get distracted easily. And then there's a yellow-green. And a green. This might be too large for my extruder. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide it right here where the yellow is. Except I pushed it together too hard. Let me see. Maybe it'll work. I shouldn't have been pressing it together, but I, I did. Because this might be just a little bit too long to go into my extruder. Maybe not. We'll see. I'm going to just roll it to where it sticks together and get it narrow enough to fit into my extruder. I want it to be the same. When I roll, especially if rolling hard uh, that you have to do with Kato clay, I end up with finger marks. So let me get my extruder out. Uh, it might fit. I don't know. This clay's been sitting all night in my 64 degree room. So it's going to be really hard anyway. I probably... Should have used my Lucy extruder because I think that's still too big. Just a little bit more. It's going to be just a little bit too long, but maybe I can get it pushed in. Yeah, I got it in there. I'm using my little square um, die. And I probably should warm this up a little bit. Just Let me get my gripper. Here we go. Let's see what we've got. It's getting a little too long to handle, so I'm just going to cut it. And I'll just continue extruding. Okay. All right, so there we go. So let's see how much of this I've got. So I've got 24 inches and I'll cut that end off and another three. So I've got 27 inches. Oh, look at this. That's the end I cut off. Isn't that kind of cool? So, 27. So, I'm going to start off cutting these at 3 inches. And I'll just set them side by side. 1, 2, 3. Oh, I just love Kato clay. It feels so good. It's a nice firm clay because that's the way Donna designed it. Being a professional like she is, 
she um, designed this clay to do, you know, to have the properties that would be good for caning. And if you wonder what I'm doing, I'm making sure I keep them in the same order. But, you know, she she likes the color. She Her colors are true. They're highly pigmented. And uh, just holds its shape well. You name it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these in order. And I'll, let's see, that one goes in there. I'll start with this one since it's the closest. And I'm going to put them in... Let's see, two, four, six, eight, nine. I'll put them in groups of three. In a row of three. And then I'll do one. Let's see, no, I start on this side. One. Oh, goodness, can you hear my daughter's cat? I cut this one a little small. I'll just match it up at one end. He gets to making these yowling noises. He's been neutered, so it's not that. But when he does these noises, he then... Let's see, this was the first end. So let me do this end. i got to remember what order I'm doing these in. But he makes these noises, and then he just starts running through the house. I mean, he it's like somebody winds him up with a rubber band and then lets it go. So let me, I'm, I know you want to see what the end of it looks like. So I'll slice off one end so you can see. And look at that. This is a rainbow retro cane. So I think what I'll do is cut it in half. And put it side by side. Now you have choices here. You can put all of your pinks on one side and your blues and greens on the other side, or you can turn it. And that really mixes it up. But I do believe I'm going to leave my light colors together. Now what you can do with this is take all of your scraps, and here's all my scraps, and I should have done this so it would already be done. But I'm going to take my roller, and you should do this with any clay, not just Kato, but it does make Kato easier. Just roll it, which starts warming it up. And this is what you do with even like that hard piece of, of magenta that I showed you earlier. If you roll it first, it starts to warm it up, and it's not so hard on your pasta machine when you roll it through the pasta machine. And I'm going to roll this at the thickest setting. So I've got this. This is already conditioned. It was conditioned last night. It just needs to be warmed up a little bit. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on, on my pasta machine on a very thin setting. But you need to go down slowly. So I was on a zero. So now I'll go through with a number three. And I incorporated a little piece of air right there, a little bubble. I'll just push the air out. And then I'll go down to a number five. And 
and you can make this as thin as you like, but I think I'm going to stop at a number five because I'm going to use this as the background for slicing my cane. This is my tile out of the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start slicing. Now this again is a time when my Lucy Clay slicer would come in handy. But I'm assuming most of you don't have one, so I won't use that. And I'm going to try to slice these as uniformly as I can by hand. And because the clay is firmer, Cato clay being firmer, it's so much easier to slice because it doesn't squish up on you. And I've got three, so let me put these three out here on my scrap clay. And make sure they butt up next to each other. How pretty is that? And I'll do a few more. Because once you create your sheet of cane slices, I hear my phone ringing, but once you create the sheet of cane slices, then you can use it to do just about anything. You can cover a pen. You can make a pen, you know, a pendant out of it. You can do just about anything. But right now, I just want to make sure that everything is butted up together. I think I sliced that one a little bit thinner than the others, but I'm going to show you how to fix that. Actually, I think I'm going to pull that one up. Because you can shave these, but I don't want to shave it that much. I'll do one more. I'll save this for something else. Put my little squares back where they belong. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to get a sharp blade, which means I'm getting out my Lucy blade. If I can find it, where did it go? Oh, there it is. This blade scares me just because it is so sharp. But the cutting edge is the narrow edge. So you can hold the... Actually, I'm going to roll over this first. I'm going to roll this just to make sure it sticks to the clay underneath it. And then I'm going to feel, and it's still very, it's uneven right here. That's pretty smooth. So it's like right here, I need to shave a little bit. So I'm going to take my blade and curve it a little bit and just slice off the high part. See how it's just catching those few pieces there? That should do it. Now, I'm not going to shave off anymore. That's pretty good. 
So I always put my Lucy blade back in its sheath because I have cut myself with that many times. And then just roll over it again with a roller. And see where it was pushing out at these bottom ones a little bit. So you, you want to make sure you go in both directions so you don't distort your cane too much. But this is a rainbow retro cane. So I hope you like this. Um, I'll probably be making projects with this in the future, but I just wanted you to see, you know, what we had. Let me trim this off. I'll hold on to this scrap clay, and the reason I'm using this for scrap clay is that you know the colors will match if any of it happens to show through. You know the colors will match because they're the colors from the cane. Maybe you can see it better this way. So there you go. So actually, well, let me go ahead and do something here. Um, I do have my RJ Crafts cutters. Let me get those out. I've gotten so many cutters lately. I think that's the set that I want. This is RJ Crafts Cutter Set 152. And it's different pendant size, or shapes and sizes. You've got a large and small of all these different shapes. And actually what I would do, let me look and see, there's some purple. I was going to say I would use purple. I've cut it right there, so let me do that. Pull that off. This is the scrap clay again. But what I would do is maybe do Let me see something here. I'm trying to put a shape inside of a shape. Let's see how this works. And then I would take some of this and make sure I get some uh, some that has the purple in it. And I'll go this way with it so that... I think I'll just do this right here. I might use this to place it. And then just take a ball tool. Excuse me if my hair was in the way. Let me come in a little bit. But I'm trying to get this straight all the way around. needs to come over just a little bit and then I'll just hold this as I pull the cutter off but I do need to go over this with my fingers a little bit so I'll just have to do it by hand And 
And then I, what I would do is maybe take some black, a little thin rope of black, which I don't have any black conditioned. But I would run a little thin line of black and put it along the edge of this. But doesn't that make a pretty pendant if you like the pastel colors? And then I would also back it on black. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? So there's so many things. You're only limited by your own imagination. And right now my imagination is very limited. But like I said, you could cover a pen with this. It would make a gorgeous pen. And But I really like... Let me just pick it up again. I really like the different colors. The way it pulls and drags the colors together. But I really like this technique. So I hope you like that as much as I did. And I will be back again next Monday with another polymer clay tutorial. Have a great week. Bye-bye.